So I thought I would show everybody today how I make my potato leek soup. This is something that I make all the time. In fact, I made it for Christmas last year. So we had potato leek soup for Christmas dinner because it's great comfort food and I can make homemade bread with it and it just tastes so awesome and yummy on a cold, wet day. So um, Brian has a little bit of a backache, a shoulder ache, probably from working on his computer on YouTube videos and so this is a good day to have a little comfort food. We've already got some homemade bread that I made yesterday and so today we will have soup and bread for dinner and I thought I would take you along. Okay so let's talk about our ingredients a little bit. What I have already prepared is I topped up three leeks and so these leeks are chopped really far up into the stem. You can see that, that I like to get as much of this lighter green leek as possible in there that just really adds a nice flavor. So make sure you get some of that in there. You may need to peel back your stem a little bit as you go, but it's good to get as much of that as you can get in there. And you can see how much three leeks will give you. This is, you know, a good, good full bowl. Um, then I have one onion that I've chopped up. I have a little bit of whipping cream that we'll add in. Um, sometimes I use milk. It just depends on what I have on hand. I happen to be going to the store anyways. So I thought I'd grab some whipping cream just to make it a little yummier for us. We have salt and pepper. Um, I will add a certain amount of chicken stock. Um, I may not use both of these, but it, I'll definitely probably break into the second one. So then I have some marjoram that just adds a really kind of a yellowy, yummy texture to or broth to the top of it. You'll, you'll see when I add it, it just looks really nice and it, it, the flavor is awesome. I have two cloves of garlic that I've chopped up. You can add more or less to taste. I kind of vary the garlic a bit. Um, today I had Italian sausage in my freezer and so I pulled that out and that's what I'm going to use today but I like it to have a little bit of a sage flavor so I grabbed a couple leaves of sage and chopped those up and then I also have some fresh thyme just a couple sprigs that I pulled out of the garden. Um, next I have some finely chopped up kale so this is Lusitano and Ragged Jack kale. Um, you can use whatever kind you like. Since I'm mixing kale and this is um, Swiss chard, this is rainbow Swiss chard, so I have some red and some green. Uh, and I chop that up a little bit bigger because it doesn't cook as fast as the kale. And so when I mix, I kind of chop them a little bit differently. Um, and I just kind of have half and half right now. And usually I'll just grab whatever I happen to have. So, um, you can use what whatever kind of green you want to use that you would normally saute or cook into something. So you could use spinach, you could use kale, you could use chard, um, you could probably even use collard greens or turnip greens if you wanted to. You just need to vary the cooking time or the, the cut on it to, to make that work. Um, and then I have, today I have seven of these big red potatoes. So they are the larger sized. Um, usually I get them so that they kind of fit in the palm of my hand. And I just chop them up today. Sometimes I'll use my mandolin. Sometimes I do chop it a little finer than that. And then other times I'll chop it a little chunkier than that. It just depends on what I want. I did want kind of a little bit more of a chunky soup today. So I went ahead and just kind of chopped it um, about what is that maybe a quarter inch and so um but you you can do it however you want if you want to take the skins off that's fine if you you know like it like with the skin like i do then you can leave them on um but it's totally up to you and so that's pretty much it so let's go ahead and get started okay so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to stir my oven up or my stove up and for right now, I'm going to put it just a little bit below the high setting and I cut into the sausage. 
and we are going to use the whole roll. And try not to cut yourself like I almost did there. out of this container and then I will break it up into little pieces and, as it's cooking. Um, you do want this to kind of be broken into bits quite a bit. It just works better in the soup that way. So don't just leave it set in the bottom of your pan and expect it to kind of work out. Then you're going to have huge clumps and you're going to wonder why is my pork so strong of a flavor? It's it's because you've got too big of a piece. You want it to kind of be broken down into little bits so that it, every bite has a little bit of, of pork. And I'll wash my hands. These are, these are kind of like you would use for a walk and they work really well for kind of breaking down your meats into good chunks. And so the way I do this is I just kind of almost like slice it like I would if I were going to make um, slices of pork for putting it on like a breakfast sandwich or something and then I'll chop that little bit up and then I do it again until all of it is kind of broken down in the bottom of the, of the pot. see how we've got this started here and what I'll do is I'll just saute this until it's lightly brown and then we'll come back okay so I wanted you guys to see what I mean by broken down so you can see that this is, this is really not very bumpy So we kind of have it just really nicely pulled out. And so at this point, now that we've kind of browned the meat, first thing I'm going to do is add the onions. And so we're going to mix those in. And then what we're looking for is to get those kind of cook down just a little bit. So probably not more than a minute on this. So I'm just sauteing those onions in really nice. And I'm not quite cooking them to a translucent consistency because we're going to add in our leeks and then our garlic. Really just kind of getting those mixed in. And very carefully gonna dump in these leeks now. Bits of it. I cook this in a larger pot so I have a stock pot that sometimes I'll cook this in but that's actually in the dishwasher right now this will work this 
cast this um, pan, this cast iron pan is coated in enamel, but you can see I need to, really need to get a new one because it's getting rusty around the edges and it's really bugging me, but I can't seem to get rid of that. I think it's just a lower quality. So once we kind of get those started, and what I like to do is just kind of let that sit. And at this point, I will toss in those, the sage and the thyme. Those are really helping me season my meat some. And then I'll throw in my garlic. Which always needs to loosen out of the thing. This garlic's really sticky. stir and you can see the leeks and the onions are starting to caramelize and break down and get a little bit more translucent. Um, you do want to kind of watch for your leeks that need to be separated some and get those pulled in. And usually I'll just kind of stick that in the middle and get it broken in. You could do that as you're chopping as well. I just, I'm gonna be doing this kind of poking at it thing anyway, so it's, it's easy to do it right now. So I'm just kind of giving that a little stir and then letting it sit some. And so we'll just let that kind of sit and stir and stuff for a couple minutes. And then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so this is about the level of translucency we're going for. Um, it starts to release some, some moisture and some water, and you can kind of see that onions have sort of disappeared into things, and so that's kind of what we're looking for. It's just getting that softness started. So our next step is to add all of these potatoes. So I'm going to very carefully move my cutting board over here and just kind of push them in. I will take my chicken stock, chicken broth, whatever you want to use, and I will just cover that. And so one of the reasons why I use a little bit different amounts of, of chicken broth is that sometimes the onions and leeks have a little bit more moisture and water in them, and so I don't need as much, or maybe my, my meat is a little bit more moist or something. I don't know, but... I just find that I always seem to need more than one, <laughs> but not necessarily always two. Um, and sometimes I'll add two just to kind of extend it a little and make sure I use that second one. I think today though, I'm gonna be really close to the top here, so I'll leave it about, that's about one and a half of these. So these are, um, one quart each. So about one and a half quarts today. So I'm just going to stuff that extra half quart of chicken broth into the refrigerator and I'll use that for something else. So here is about where I filled it. You really just kind of want to make sure your potatoes get mostly covered there. They're kind of floating to the top a little bit, so you can kind of see how it's... But 
once I stir all this a couple times, right now I'm just going to leave it set so that onion and leek stuff is on the bottom. Um, and we're going to bring that up to a boil and then I will stir it. Okay, so we're up to a boil and so now it's time to really gently stir. It's another reason I like this flat um, wooden spoony thing because it's a little easier just to kind of fold while you're stirring, which gets everything mixed in a little bit better. So I'll bring you over and show you that. Oil here. What I would do next is put in some black pepper. Obviously, if you're using already ground black pepper, <laughs> you are not going to need to scatter it for that long. Um, I'm just looking for kind of getting coverage on the top. And then I will add in about maybe maybe a, a tablespoon, a tablespoon and a half of, of salt. And I'm using coarse salt. What we're looking for here is to have the potatoes be pretty much done and so you can kind of break them and make sure that they break and then, then you know your potatoes are cooked well enough. And so the next step is to add our marjoram. So I'm just going to add about a teaspoon of marjoram and just sprinkle that on top. and. One of the things I like about this marjoram in here is that it it kind of puts off, I don't know if you can see it, but it it adds sort of like essence to it. So it's a very tea-like herb and it permeates and adds some, some green color as well. So it's pretty in addition to tasting good. And then what I'll do next is I'll just throw that kale and um, greens on top of there. So you can see we've got our rainbow switch chart now. It's about half and half. And like I said, I chopped those up a little bit differently. And then I just kind of push that down a bit into the soup. At this point, I'm going to turn the temperature down. So I will put it about medium, just touching that simmer there. And then we'll let that cook for a minute and then I will get out the immersion blender. I've let this soup cook down for about another minute and those greens are getting nice and soft. And so I'm just going to push them down into the soup a bit. And then I'm going to take my immersion blender that fully grabbing onto some of the potatoes while I do that and I'm just going to press the pulse button. I'm going to do it again. Move and do it again. The reason I want to make sure that your blender is way down in there because this is extremely hot and you yourself. So be careful not to burn. As 
I do that, I kind of check the soup to see if it's thickened to the degree that I want it to thicken. And I vary that a bit. Um, sometimes I want my soup to be more chunky, and then other times I want it to be a little bit more creamy. I think today I'm going for sort of in between. taken on somewhat creamy texture but we still have good chunks of potato you can see the leek in there as well as the greens and this is pretty good and so the next step will be to add a little bit of our cream one of the things I like to do when I'm using cream that people may not think about is I shake it up a bit just to make sure the consistency is the same throughout. So once I get that shook up, crack it open. Okay, so we're gonna add a bit of cream and what I like to do is just kind of drizzle it on top, stir my soup, At this point, I'm really kind of looking for kind of like a creamy golden color, I guess I would call it. So I think I'm just going to add just a tiny bit more. And at this point, I will taste it and see if it needs more salt and pepper. And then I just add that to taste. And then we're done. So this is my potato leek soup, guys. I hope you enjoy it. Have a good day. Bye.